So in this video, I'm going to show you how I transform this otherwise mundane scene into this using my off-camera flash. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could also follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So to give you a brief background on the shoot that I am about to share with you today, it was basically a shot I did while I was on vacation, so I wasn't prepared. Therefore, I wasn't able to bring any video gear to record a real BTS for you guys. However, I always do bring my camera with me and the light and sometimes a modifier depending on how much space I have in the car, especially that I was traveling with my wife. So normally when we're traveling and I want to take some very nice portraits of her, I have the gear with me. But since we were visiting a friend and it was the first time I've actually seen him in over two years, uh, we just went around his toys and when I saw his bike, I was like, wait, we gotta shoot that. And that is the scene, uh, that is the photo that I will be sharing with you today, okay? So when we did our ocular, this is the area in which I wanted to shoot. The concept was I wanted the bike here in the middle. Then I would have him here walking towards me and really having that really beautiful depth and having beautiful sky like this in the background. However, you know how it is when you're shooting outdoor, you just never know when the weather will change. And unfortunately that happened to us. Instead of having really nice blue skies like this, we were faced with this situation. It became an overcast day. So when you're shooting in an overcast day, there are two problems already. Number one, you lose a lot of contrast. Though you get beautiful soft light, but you lose contrast. And for me, contrast is more important because, or well, as equally as important as the quality of the light because that is the one that gives that shape, form, texture, and depth to that image. And secondly, if the, it is cloudy, you lose a lot of color. In other words, you don't get the really bright reds, you don't get the greens in the, in the foliage in the back or in the trees or the sky is not that blue, okay? But we can also remedy a few of those things with proper exposure and adding artificial light, okay? So the camera that I used for this shoot is this one. This is my Sony A7R Mark IV, and the lens was an 85mm 1.4 lens. Now, the reason why I chose this 85mm 1.4 lens is because I wanted to bring in compression. In other words, initially, I wanted to shoot in the runway that had a really, really deep um, piece of road, obviously, and I wanted to make it smaller to make my subject bigger, but still get that, um, that depth in terms of the composition. However, when we were faced with that situation that the sky wasn't beautiful, I had to figure out another scene, which is this one, which was off the runway, to be able to get a little bit of contrast between the reds and the greens and the blues. Now, that 85 still works with that because again, it compresses everything and I wanted to shoot at 1.4. Shooting at 1.4 will make that image stand out because of bokeh and just blur out the background a bit, but not too much that you won't be able to really see what's already in the back. Now, a rule of thumb when it comes to bokeh is that it is also affected by focal length and the distance of your lens to your subject. In other words, since I was shooting so far, even if I was shooting at 1.4, the bike may be blurred a little bit, but not too much because the further you are, the more forgiving your plane of focus will be even if you're shooting at 1.4. Now, if I use the same lens and shot in really close like a portrait, most likely I would just have the eyes in focus and maybe the ears will be out of focus already, okay? So the light that I used was my Profoto B2. This one I always have in the car because it's powerful, it's light, and it's small, and it comes with two heads in the back. It's also powered using this one. It's a portable battery pack. Now you guys may say there are a lot of other lights out there, but you know, to each his own. I still do love the light quality that's coming out with this Pro Photos. How I wish though that I had the B1s, then that would actually be perfect, but the B1s, are a bit bigger and if I wanted to bring in two lights it's actually a bit bigger than than this B2 set okay 
And then I triggered this one remotely using this one, the Pro Photo TTL Air Trigger, okay, which goes on top of my camera here. So this was the first layout that we were playing around with. And when I started shooting, as, as I said earlier, I wanted to shoot at 1.4. So I was shooting at high speed sync initially. And this 250 watts was not powerful enough given the fact that I was using this modifier. So this was a Photix Deep Octa 80, which was quite big. In other words, we were losing a lot of power. So to remedy that, because I still wanted to shoot at 1.4, what I did was I attached an ND filter to the front of my lens. This is a Hoya ND32 filter and I attach it this way. This one basically puts shades on your lens. In other words, cutting the light that's entering the sensor. Therefore, I was bring, able to bring down my aperture to 1.4 and stay within my flash sync speed. By doing that, I actually maximized the power of my flash, which then was more than enough for the scene that I was shooting. So here is the scene, and as I explained to you guys earlier, the reason why I like bringing around the Pro Photos is because it comes with two flash heads. So I was able to use one flash head as my main light and the other flash head as a kicker light that sometimes would actually move here in front to give more light here to this part of the bike. Now, as you can see, my light here is actually facing upwards. I am technically feathering the light, but the real reason why I was doing that was I did not want a lot of light spill here. I wanted most of the light to fall here and not on the road so that it looks as natural as possible. Now, you may say maybe I should have just used the grid, but the problem is if I used the grid, then I would have lost even more power. And right now, I was actually pushing my 250 watts of power already. And I was shooting at full power, okay? This was the output of this scene. As you can see here, there is no visible light here in the floor. It looks very, very natural. It looks as if it were lit by the sun. The kicker light, I think at this point, I had it moved towards here to light up this part of the bike instead of having a kicker here. And this was what I was saying earlier, the contrast between the greens and the reds. And remember I told you earlier, one of the bigger problems of shooting outdoor during a cloudy day is that you lose a lot of color. But one solution to that is by underexposing, which is what I did with this scene. I underexposed the scene by about two stops to be able to bring out the colors, the richness of the colors in the background, which made the greens pop even more. And having it in contrast with a red bike just made the bike stand out even more. Okay, And of course, we were able to push a bit of color here in the sky also by underexposing the scene. Okay. And after that, I was able to finally shoot in this area that I originally intended to shoot in because now there was a bit of color in the sky behind. So I immediately asked them to just put the bike here, had the light in the same position as you can see, it's still facing upwards. And also I'd like to say sorry for the quality of the behind the scenes photos. This wasn't really meant to be a video, but then when the images started coming out from my computer, when I started processing them, I was like, hey, this might actually make a good video. So I asked the guys who were around us who decided to shoot some BTS photos with their phones to give it to me. So that's what I'm sharing with you guys today. So from here, you can see now that we actually had that beautiful sunset already. So we had the depth here that we wanted. You know, it would have been nice to put him in center, but then the fact is this is where the cloud formation really had color in. So you follow the light. You, it, you don't necessarily have to go to the best composition. You go to where the best light is. And in this case, the best light was here in this area, but at least we got the depth of the road a little. Okay, so we had the light here again and another light shining through here. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, if you have more questions or you would want to learn more, I do actually give a series of one-on-one -on -one workshops, the details of which is in the description below. Okay, so till the next video.